Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Schuler. I'm the VP for Blue Scale Gaming and also the head of R&D for them. Um, I'm here actually with one of my friends, Paul Dose, I don't... who has asked me to help him with designing a card game and demoing it. Um, just for a quick tutorial video, we just did some gutting of the core in-depth mechanics. That way we have a quick little tutorial that we get, can show you guys for what the work is in progress for this game in general. And we're going to try to keep this video short because I found out that my phone does not record past about 25 minutes. So, um, the basic premise of the game, there's normally about 50 cards in the deck. Uh, in these decks that we're actually using, we're only going to have 25. So we are going to play with the standard hand size because the numbers haven't been changed to uh, alter that. But we both are going to roll a dice to determine who goes first. So let me just roll one. I got five. I got, I got five. five. We're going to have this fun game now. Four. Six. Six. Okay, so Schuler can determine if he wants to go first or second. I'll be going first. Um, in this game, when it comes to going first or second, because there are hazards and win conditions that you can place, whoever chooses to go first, or whoever does go first, has the right to lay down win conditions. It's always to their left hand side. Um, since we're going to be doing this on a 3x7 grid instead of the normal full-sized 5x7, I'll lay down two win cons, he lays down one. So I'm going to place mine here. And because and then... he laid down one win con, he gets to lay down two hazards, and I get to lay down one hazard. So we'll do it like So that. now that our hazards and our win conditions are now on the board, we reveal our leader. Our leader is a gold card taken out of the deck, and it's placed on the left-hand side. I've chosen... A la Mandragoran, uh, mainly because he was announced today for his uh, casting in the show. And then Schuler has chosen Geo Jeff from Bornhold. There you go, that one. Uh, fans of the books will know who that is, but he's the uh, one of the captains of the Commander of the Light, uh, or the Children of the Light. So now we're going to draw our ten cards, because I haven't altered the numbers. We have to go with the actual full-size hand for a um, regular game, because the numbers are not tweaked to modify this. And now we're going to reveal the win conditions. So the first win condition is going to be Emmett's Field. It's uh, 13 combat and 13 knowledge required on the row in order to win it. The second win condition is Camelin, which is 25 in politics. And the third win condition is the Tuathwan Wagons, which is 25 in knowledge. Uh, the hazards that we're going to be playing into on the Tuathwan Wagons are the Illusion, which lowers knowledge of any card put down that has a knowledge card by 3. Um, we're also going to be playing into the separation in Camelin, which actually is going to not have any relevance because it lowers combat power, which we're going to be primarily be playing towards politics. And then finally, the last hazard is going to be deception, which gives a plus two to politics and a minus one to knowledge on a row where you actually need knowledge. So that's actually a benefit uh, for whoever's trying to counteract a player. So it's actually a good move. Um, so Schuler gets to go first, and you always play to the closest side to purple. So if he's going to start here, here, or here, he can put in any of these three slots. You're limited to one card a turn, and you can play your leader uh, as your starting card if you choose. Because of the fact that we're doing this as just a quick tutorial, it's supposed to be on a normal 5x7 grid. Um, first one to get three of the five victory conditions wins because it's just going to be a quick tutorial we're just going to play the first win instead of play out all three yep. just so that way you have a field for the board um cards do have effects cards also have non-effect units every game has both of those i'm going to start by playing what we refer to as a muster which lets me just call another copy of it out of the deck so essentially he's played a political unit he's played the uh, women's circle from emmons field it's going to search for another political unit which okay. that i was about to say that that card made no sense there um, they're both political, they're both worth three points, and he got a little bit of filtering out of the deck. Um, he also has six points contributing to his score on that side of the board. So I'm actually going to get a bigger dice, because we're going to need a slightly larger dice. Apologize for the phone calls, we didn't silence so cell phones prior to starting. Um, so we're going to say that this one is Schuler's dice, which is the white dice, and I'm going to play as the red dice, and I have currently zero. And we'll put one of those on each one. So now I get to play a card on that row. And uh, because we have knowledge necessary, I'm actually going to put this down right here. And these are the uh, the ship crewmen, which are from Bale Doman's ship in the first book. 
Every card we're playing is from the uh, essentially a little bit of Eye of the World and a little bit of the Great Hunt. But this is another muster unit. It pulls from the deck directly. And because it is knowledge and knowledge gets a neg one on the row, instead of these being worth three points each, they're worth two points each. So I'll put here that I have four points contributing towards me on that row. Um, and then I'm gonna also have uh, these dice set aside for Schuler on there. And then I'll play with the funny colored dice over here. Apologize for the noise. And that's all we should need for now. So now it's Schuler's turn. You get to play one card a turn. And you're essentially just trying to build up enough strength to claim the territory. So now Schuler's going to move on with his stuff. I'm going to go start just because, a quick tutorial, I'll get another six point regular unit just on there, bringing me up to 12 out of the 25. Yep, which puts him at 12. So now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to actually put down a gold unit. Now, gold units are much stronger and they have inherent uh, advantages over other units in the game because they usually have a lack of targeting on them. Since he's a knowledge unit, this lowers him by three, putting him at seven, which puts my total score on this row to seven. I'm going to also go ahead and play one of my musters on this row, which lets me call out another one. And they get no negs because they're combat instead of knowledge or politics, so that gets me six points towards one of the two win conditions. Yep. Normally, whenever a win con is met, it has to be the full win con on the card. Um, but if a situation arises where you can only have one win condition because the row gets filled up, it's whoever has primary one of the two win conditions fully met. And then if both players have one of the win conditions fully met, it's the player closest to winning the second condition. Going over numbers doesn't matter. All that matters is just being able to at least hit the number properly. Yep. And so next up, I'm going to put down some points on the same row because I'm again trying to claim a row worth knowledge and I'm going to put down Loyal. He's a silver unit, so he's a little bit stronger. Now silver and golds, just to uh, put another reference out there for you, silver and gold units are single copies only. So you can only play a single copy of any silver or gold unit in the deck. So I can only have one Loyal. But on this row now, I currently have 12 points contributed towards my goal of taking the Tawath One Lions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go play an item which allows me to move one unit that is silver or bronze from any row to any other row. So, so he's going, going to, to move my five point unit. Yeah, you played the Waygate. So basically he can move a unit to anywhere else on the board as long as it's silver or bronze. Gold units are immune or else he would have probably taken uh, the green man here. And so. now because now. it's wisdom again it does get a minus one. So That'll go down to four. That now becomes seven again. But because he moved a knowledge unit here, and we need knowledge on that row, it actually buffs mine up by four to eight. Yep. Here. Normally we just keep track of these in our head, but mm -hmm. we are showing the dice for the purposes of the video. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so next up, I guess I need to start contesting in other places because he's thwarted my plans. Um, I'm going to put down my muster unit. Uh, it's the village council from the Emmons field to give me two more units on that row, and it gives me six points contributed towards my score for politics on this row. And if I can find a six, there's a six. I'm going to respond by playing. Let me see here. A little bit of dead time, guys. Sorry about that. Still a strategy game overall. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, it starts out as checkers and ends up as chess. That's the understatement of the century, folks. Um, <laughs> I'm game. going to go play Arrow. eight point unit, <laughs> just so that way I have some kind of points on the other side also, which is going to go down because it's minus two. It'll go down to a six, allowing me to get an additional six points on this row here, you got it right here. towards the other win condition. Well, we're just going to do it this way so okay. we know what's going on. No problem. The total is 26. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to respond the same way that he did. Um, I'm actually going to move his unit with a way gate as well to this row, which because he's knowledge, he's going to drop down to three, and he's actually worth contributing nothing now to that row. So he drops down to six. And he's still at a three now. I'm going to go ahead and play eight points. 
Ingtar. Puts me at almost the entire win con there. Um, well, that's going to put you at... Uh, 14. 14 so for actually that. Actually, that's one of the two. Yeah, he's at 14 and nothing else. But the point is, is that you have to have both in order to win it on here. So he would need a bunch of knowledge. Um, it doesn't appear that I'm going to be able to best him. Uh, what I can do is... If I had another muster unit, I could actually put this here, and whoever would be closer would win the game. But because now, I don't have one... In that situation where neither of the win cons are met, though, it's whoever's closest to winning one Which of them. Which we would actually be tied, so that's why I'm glad we don't have one there. Yeah, that <laughs> works out great for me. <laughs> Because in a tie um, situation like that, the row goes unclaimed. Yes, which is never fun. Okay, so I don't, I didn't draw enough items to actually counteract this, but I will put this down. I'll put down more gays in the land of Cayman. I'm banking, but anything he puts there is going to give him the victory on that row now. So yeah, he wins the row. So at this point, we would, you know, the game wouldn't normally be over, but yes, in this situation, we will call it over. The bottom line is, is that because he has 10 and 8 here, and... Um, and he has 10 and 8, which is 18, and 20, uh, 21 and 24. 24. He's very, he's got a lot of combat, but since he overwhelms my knowledge on that row, he would claim the row. All these cards would disappear, we would draw 7 new cards, and the turn, the point would be his. He would be playing to 2 points normally if we were playing three, uh, 3 rows individually. But that's a brief summary of how the game works. Uh, we didn't put in a lot of effects just to give the dumbed down simple rules. Uh, the only other thing uh, that could possibly be mentioned is that if you notice the colors, he played gray, I played blue. You can't play the two mixed. But aside from that, there's uh, there's some other color categories and stuff. There's a lot more to the game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want more information, just let us know. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.